Hello everyone, my name is Thomas, a.k.a. Mr. Warburg, and this is the 26th episode of the Mr. Warburg Show. As you can see on my shirt here, you already know what we're going to be talking about. After all, it is the opening weekend for TMNT, Out of the Shadows. I don't think there was actually a 2 in the title, but whatever. It's the sequel to the 2014, I think it was 2014, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was the Michael Bay produced General Turd. Um, but the trailers for this one... A lot of the casting, uh, particularly like Stephen Amell as Casey Jones, as well as some interviews that came out with the director and w how he viewed the franchise, kind of got me pumped. And that opening trailer, I mean, with with the van and the manhole covers and the soundtrack, it was pretty damn good. And then the second trailer, the Super Bowl one, showed Krang, which was like, oh, they are just bringing in everything from the cartoon at this point, more or less, at least the 80s cartoon. And so I went in, you know, not expecting it to be great because the first one... You know, there was literally, you had every reason to go in with lowered expectations. And doing so, I still came out of the movie really entertained. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I went to it on a matinee because I didn't want to pay uh, full price at the theater near me. When it has the nice seats, since the matinee was cheaper, I went and saw it there. And yeah, it was an entertaining movie. Uh, and pretty much everything I thought they would nail, they nailed. What I thought they wouldn't, they didn't. And what I mean by that is particularly the Turtles' relationships to each other, which I think were the only redeeming quality of the first movie that was on display for the entirety of the movie this time not just a little bit towards the end like with that elevator scene in the first one where they just start jamming out i was like there that just do that for the whole movie and you're already on better footing this movie did that from the jump you had a much better sense that they were brothers and that came across really well casey jones was different than the usual version of casey's jones but Stephen amell was awesome so i'm not going to hold that against anything because you know, Stephen Amell. Though I did, there was one scene where he was talking about how he just had one goal. And I kind of wanted him to say, survive. But I didn't. He, but he didn't. And it would have been, kind of would just ruined everything. But God, it would have been awesome. Mostly I just love Stephen Amell. So I'm kind of rambling because Stephen Amell is awesome. Megan Fox is still just like, why'd you cast her as April O'Neil? You know, and she's not even like doing anything newsy into like the last 30 seconds of the movie. Just like, that's the character. That's her character. What the hell? At this point, they just basically should just make her a spy because that's all she was in this movie, which is not the character. Sorry, it's not. At least for me. Uh, Splinter was awesome. Bebop and Rocksteady, they were awesome. Shredder was actually a human being this time and not in a giant robot suit with, like, knives sticking out everywhere. Uh, the story was suitably cartoonish, and it is based on a cartoon, so you can't really hold that against it because it's a freaking cartoon movie, you know, but with CGI characters instead of a cartoon. You know, uh, and it was, you know, like I said, perfectly entertaining movie. And if you like the trailers, if you got the tone of the movie from the trailers, because it definitely is the movie, the trailers definitely, this is what you're getting. Uh, if you liked that, you're going to have a good time with the movie. Is it good? Not particularly, but it is fun. And if they can continue the level of improvement from the first to the second, if it gets a sequel, I know it didn't, isn't doing so well at the box office and sequels as a whole this year aren't really doing very well. If they do eke out a sequel and they can continue the level of like improvement uh, into the third one, we're gonna be looking at an actually pretty good movie, I think. If you know that holds into a third movie, which who knows? It'll probably be a new director. There will be a different cast, except for the turtles, and who knows? It could all fall apart again. But yeah, that's my thoughts on Team and T out of the shadows. Uh, my other topic for the weekend is something that I thought about making this like the primary and then pushing Team and T uh, to next week. But I ultimately just decided to do it, you know, here in one take. And the me rambling, I'm leaving that all in because I'm not doing second takes today. Game of Thrones is back. Preacher episode two is back. Got family dinner with the bro because he turned 21 this week. So we're getting this in. So the DC on CW, essentially. And we'll get into a little bit of the CBS stuff, uh, which is now on the CW. I watch pretty much most of my network shows are on the CW, which is kind of weird. Uh, you know, you got Supernatural, Arrow, Flash, Legend of Tomorrow, and coming this fall, Supergirl. Now, all those shows are coming back, which I didn't think uh, Supernatural would, plus The 100, which is fucking awesome. And if you're not watching The 100, stop watching my videos. Go to Netflix, search The 100. Uh, it's the numbers, 100. And you will love that show. Got to get through episode three, because it's a bunch of younger actors. But they just all of a sudden click in episode four, and it's just off to the races. It's awesome. Love it. The DC specifically on CW, though, is kind of hitting a new... 
kind of opening up into a new world uh, this fall, and I'll talk a little bit as why that is. But if you're watching this, you probably watched The Flash already, so you know what I'm talking about. So this is more for people who don't usually watch my videos. But uh, the DC on the CW, obviously, The Flash is its, you know, the flagship show at this point. It was Arrow a couple seasons ago, and season two of Arrow still, I think, ranks equally with season one of Flash. Um, but season two of Flash was not as good as season one. It was still very, very good, borderline great, but not, you know, the textbook. This is how you do a, a lighthearted, like, still emotionally relevant comic book show you know, for an entire 23-episode season. And season two just didn't quite hit all the same notes, particularly the finale. It didn't have that kind of, you know, emotional punch that carries you through, you know, the off-season that season one had in spades. That said, though, that teaser at the end, holy shit, is that going to be awesome. But that's for like a minute and a half down the road. Uh, on the other side of the show, uh, you know, or other side of the universe, you have Arrow. Uh, it's kind of, it's, you know, like more real-time counterpart. Uh, season 4 was a breath of fresh air from Season 3, which was just kind of a clusterfuck. Um, season 4 had a particularly, in particular reasons, a way better villain. Damian Dark, uh, Neil McDonough, Hugh McDonough, however you say his last name. Awesome villain is Damian Dark. That never failed, whereas the villain kind of faltered on Flash a bit. He was still menacing, even when his plans were falling apart. He was, and is, a great actor, so of course that's that comes across. Um, I will say their finale, much like Flash, it just kind of didn't hit the right notes for me. Particularly, it was even worse because it just undid the entire couple seasons of Oliver's arc, and he just straight up murders the villain. Which, like, his whole point is he wants to be a lighter, more hopeful hero, and he was earlier in the episode. Even earlier in the episode, he's inspiring people and being better, and all of a sudden, oh, Shank, you're dead. I was like, that's just, what? Why go there? Like, and that, it's just, it's dumb. Legends of Tomorrow, though, had an absolute inverse from Arrow and Flash in that it didn't start strong at all, much like Arrow and Flash did start, finished weak. Legends of Tomorrow started kind of weak, particularly due to its weak villain, uh, Casper, Ken, whatever the dude that's playing Vandal Savage, shouldn't have done Vandal Savage in the first place if that's who you're going to cast, because the guy was not menacing at all. I mean, look at the different incarnations we've had of Vandal Savage. Even Smallville did it better with their Dean Cain not really Vandal Savage, but he pretty much is Vandal Savage. And you have animated stuff like Phil Morris just nailing it in Justice League Doom. And I mean, like, what's he doing? Bring him back and just have him be Dark or have him be uh, Vandal Savage, and it would have been amazing. But that's a whole other thing because the heroes also had some miscasts, like particularly Hawkman and Hawkgirl. They just did not fit in with the rest of the cast at all. Like, it just it, nothing ever gelled. Their forced romance subplot bullshit is just. Ugh. Just, but why? Why go there? It works on Flash, particularly because the characters, that's the hallmark of the show. It's superhero stuff aside, the characters are awesome, and they're always at the forefront on that show. Arrow is like that to a lesser extent, but they they really, it just feels kind of forced. On Flash, it's all, it just kind of works. Uh, Bludgeon's Tomorrow, it didn't at all, particularly the Ray and uh, that whole bullshit thing. But then towards the end, all of a sudden, it just turned a corner. Uh, particularly uh, a couple episodes like when they got stuck in the 60s, and it was like, whoa, like the stakes are picking up here. And it kept building, and then Snart died, who's the best character on the show outside of maybe Sarah Lance or uh, Rip Hunter. And how he died was awesome, and his little, like, in the past, like Mick goes back and talks to him in the past before he dies without telling him that he's dead. Goodbye type scene was really, really, like, really well acted well written and it felt you know like it would make sense in the universe that they've done which is not something that they were doing in the beginning of the season uh, you had awesome moments like uh, the atom going big before ant-man did in civil war and punching the hell out of a future robot which was awesome and then the uh, finale which was a uh, kind of a three different time period simultaneous ass kicking which didn't need to be simultaneous like at all uh, but it was because it added some cool effects and the Justice Society teaser at the end was, oh shit. Plus the Thanagar stuff that they kind of touched on, uh, the episode where Snark died, they're like, oh yeah, the Thanagarians are going to come and wipe everything out until like 2180 like, or something like that. So they, the Time Masters needed Vandal Savage to come rule the world and unite everyone. Uh, and now Savage is dead, so that's not going to happen. So they're going to have to deal with that Thanagarian stuff, which means, unfortunately, Hawkgirl and Hawkman are going to have to come back. God, I really hope they just kind of have an older version 
of Hawkman, and it's Michael Shanks. That'd be pretty awesome, because I want to see that dude rock a mace one more time. Uh, but the other big thing that, maybe this was longer than a minute and a half from when I last touched on it, and that was how Flash ended. Which maybe all this stuff I've been claiming about how everything wasn't perfect, which nothing ever is, isn't going to mean anything, because fucking Flashpoint is going to happen. I don't know how they're going to do it, and I assume at, like, Comic-Con and stuff, we're going to start hearing how, where, because that's when they usually start to get into the writer's room and, you know, really start putting together their, you know, where the season four, or season three in this case, is going to go. And I'm hoping, you know, from a storytelling standpoint, they do it almost like a miniseries. Like, it'll come out before the Arrow premiere and before the Legends of Tomorrow and before Supergirl's premiere, because she's coming over. And the, you know, the issue with her coming over is... Is she going to stay a separate reality? Because you have this Flashpoint event going on that, if done right, could end with him, you know, getting his powers back and having to go and stop himself from saving his mom and all that to kind of touch on the imagery from the Season 1 finale. But when he comes back, the world is more or less the same, but some stuff is different. And the biggest difference being Supergirl's now in this reality and always has been. She doesn't remember anything different. He's the only one that does. I'm hoping they do it kind of like that and the Flashpoint miniseries should maybe focus on Oliver going a more Thomas Wayne Batman route because he never would have met Barry in season 2 and never would have got the mask and like he never would have been able to like make the anti-serum to Deathstroke's uh, people because he never would have met uh, Caitlin or Cisco. so that would have been wrapped up in a much bigger maybe maybe Star City just got bombed by Argus because they couldn't stop them because that almost happened in the season 2 finale but they were able to stop it with the cure Maybe that doesn't get made, Star City blows up, the world just keeps getting darker and spinning more out of control, and then that's the world Barry Allen wakes up into after he saves his mom. That would be a very interesting place to start their kind of Flashpoint couple episode miniseries, have him reset everything, boom, kick off your season finales for the rest of the shows. I think it'd be pretty awesome and really damn ambitious, especially now that Jeff Johns is running things on the cinematic side, if they just like, hey, we're resetting everything. Everyone's back on the table for the TV. You can straight up reference Superman. Gotham City is a real place. You want Nightwing? Have him. Harley Quinn? She's back. Deadshot? Back. Deathstroke? Off the sidelines. Amanda Waller is not dead. Everything's back on the table. How awesome would that be? That would that would get me going so well. And I hope, I hope that's a reality. I don't think it will because WB's executives are fucking stupid. But they made a good call on putting Jeff Johnson in that position that he's in. So who knows? Maybe things will change because there was such bad backlash over... Batman vs. Superman, and what's shaking out with all their different directors and writers and stuff. So maybe it's going to affect the TV in a positive way, because they'll be like, hey, this is something that's working. Why are we hamstringing them? Give them what they want, and how to let them sto- tell the stories they want to tell. It could only go well for them, I think, because they're guaranteed to have two Barry Allens at some point, so why the hell can't you have two like secondary characters in Deadshot? I don't know. It's stupid. Hell, that's almost even tertiary. Like, why can't there be two of that? Dumb. Really, really dumb. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the DC, on CW, and of course, TMNT2, Out of the Shadows. If you've seen that or watched any of the DC on CW, let me know what you think of my thoughts on them in the comments below. And of course, hit the like to stay, or to whatever, if you're in the mood. And then, then hit subscribe to stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you next week. And I got something pretty awesome lined up for next week with a little woodworking project. And don't forget... Saturday, yeah, it's Saturday, not Thursday. I almost started with Thursday. Saturday night, we're doing a charity stream for Audrey, who's a friend of mine. Uh, she's had some medical issues crop up, and she usually helps coordinate charity streams for other, you know, issues, and now she's kind of behind the eight ball. So some of us are doing a 24-hour charity stream, and my next week's show is a video about me making a thing for that raffle, which is uh, pretty cool, I think. It's going to turn out really, really well. Got to finish getting it painted, but I'm looking forward to how it turns out, because so far it's looking pretty good. But like I said, hit me up in the comments, and I'll see you next week.